out there my name is sean joy aka dragnix and welcome back to the hunt if you don't know what the hunt is it's basically one minute segments going over the games that i played during the week and picked up a little bit of a taste of each of the games that i was able to play whether or not it's good what they have to offer so without further ado let's go and hunt sunless sea while this has gotten a lot of praise from critics and my colleagues alike i honestly wasn't a fan of sunless sea I mean, I love the organic storytelling and the randomization that occurs with the events that happen with every run through, and the writing is pretty good if you're willing to read. However, the game is slow and it will test your patience in terms of waiting for something to happen. The ability to continue as a different captain with more of the map revealed and some of the portions your last captain had was also cool, and you'll realize that holding on to your favorite captain is unwise, you need to explore. And while being able to add more and more stories as the game goes along, it seems like there's a real depth in terms of the storytelling going forward as well. However, combat starts out rather boring, and it takes a long while for it to start using newer and interesting strategies. It gets repetitive rather quickly, and while it is necessary to gain supplies, it was boring. You have to go slow and methodical in order to not, well, explode on your ship, and the game really lacks in terms of a reasonable pace. Some people will be okay with this, but for me, I had problems with it. It seems to drag on too much for me, and the fact that it failed to keep my interest. When it comes down to it, for those looking for a narrative roguelike experience and have the attention span to hold on during the lulls of the game, this game is for you. But other than that, it's a game that I maybe will take a look at again. Harold. An interesting take on the runner game. This game came from the PlayStation and just made its way to Steam. You're a guardian angel who's attending an angel academy looking for a scholarship. Due to some shenanigans, you end up with Harold, who's not really fit to race. It's your job to encourage him through the various races while messing with your competition's runners. The gameplay here is solid as the practice rounds that it forces upon you help you learn how to get quickly through the map and the various paths and shortcuts you can take will help throw you to the top. I do love the music and some of the gospel portions while you're playing are great and the cutscenes are animated nicely, although the game while you're running does seem muddied in terms of visuals for some reason. There are some missteps however. While you do gain huff and puff power, which is how you encourage Harold for messing with enemies, it seems to help your opponent at times and hell, sometimes it's actually faster to die than use your puff power to run fast. But keep in mind this, you have to have a controller to play this game. This is a horrible PC port. Minimal options are available and while performance is relatively fine besides loading screens, it's sad that they did really minimal effort in order to get it to Steam in my opinion. Galactic Inheritors an early access game that brings media as a main mechanic in order to engage in war, which on the surface is very interesting. But the game unfortunately has several flaws. The game plays out really, really slowly, and the game shows its early access roots with a lack of sound, as sound can just completely disappear, and a lack of keyboard controls, which is critical in an RTS. But under this very rocky surface, there are some spots in which this game may have something going for it. The use of exploration ships that can also be used to explore resources in-game is nice and gives you a reason to keep building them later. And the whole positive and negative media idea is actually something I find cool. The idea being is that you sort of have to convince your race to go to war, and that's something I do like seeing. It adds a mechanic where a player can give you positive press in hoping to put off a conflict. But, on the flip side, the game causes that to be way too slow. Even 200, 300 turns in, and no one is able to actually do anything of significance other than build, build, and build more because no one can force the attack. The first 50 to 75 turns can play out rather boring, and the game lacks the polish to make up for it. It is a game that I'll be watching, and honestly, I'm looking for anything that resembles Master of Orion 2 in today's age, but right now it's not worth the price of a mission. Starlaxis Supernova Edition An interesting take on the action puzzle genre, Starlaxis Supernova Edition is a mix of Tetris with a space battle. You control your ship by making certain combos on the field, and have to keep in mind what your ship is doing and what position it is in in order to do your best during the mission. Taking too much damage will cause your ship to catch on fire, which shortens your playing field. Now note, I'm a sucker for games like this, as games like Puzzle Quest are probably some of my favorite genres. And for that genre, this game does seemingly reasonably do well. It really rewards looking ahead in gameplay and can really come up big in terms of setting up major combos that you can do in a row. Upgrading your ship to take more damage or choosing the right ship for a mission is also important. The superpowers though are hit and miss, as sometimes it really doesn't help you whatsoever other than taking the fire away, and honestly, it takes way too long for it to actually start using it. The thing the game is failing so far for me though is that it doesn't really challenge me as I've only lost one mission which is mainly due to me not actually pausing the game. 
I will say the performance is also an issue, at least between missions. As in, the action's fine, but it takes a while for it to switch over when you've completed one. It is a cheap game, however, and I do have a genre like there that may be biasing me, but I do think it's reasonable enough for a look for puzzle enthusiasts out there. Sanctuary RPG Black Edition a comical ASCII-based adventure. While it's not exactly the most video-friendly game, its comedy and surprisingly interesting battle system that actually was a bit in depth was what kept me coming back. The various statuses that occur you'll have to pay real close attention to, as you'll have to deal with each status element accordingly, or you'll die really quickly. Each decision you make does actually play a real difference, as characters' unique traits, weapon strengths, weapon weaknesses, masteries, will make you pay close attention to everything and anything that you get your hands on. Death is permanent, but honestly it was one of those games where I didn't mind it, mostly because it was usually my own stupid fault when it happened, as opposed to situations like a crit or bad luck. Damn you, Darkest Dungeon. But what kept me coming back was the off-humor that the game threw at you. While it's not the most clever of writing, the intros in particular stood out in a game that doesn't really have a problem being comical, and really can surprise you in what it puts on screen if you're really paying attention. It's the game that I played the most during the week, surprisingly, and that's saying a lot as there's several good games during this week. It's definitely for old school RPG fans. Pixel Heroes Bite and Magic while the trailer may be what would draw people into this game, its simple gameplay and various classes do the job in terms of a simple RPG adventure that's got a bit of humor and some cameos under the hood. With a small set of skills and weapons, the game does seemingly have some basics in mind, as the rock, paper, scissors sections of elemental in terms of damage keeps the game simple at its core. As you go along, you'll unlock more classes, and there seems to be a lot of content here. Status effects in particular are the core here, as in they are probably what will take you down in the end or give you what you need. One thing to note though, loot will get overbearing. With not a lot of room to work with and seemingly needing weapons that will work to your best advantage against your enemies, having only 20 spaces to hold things, and in addition getting 3-4 to four items per encounter, and you'll have to do a lot of management. Which really sucks considering you have to drop items one at a time, it's the game's biggest flaw. Nevertheless, the experience was enjoyable for someone looking for basic RPG experience with some off humor, and it is something that after retrying it after my initial play session, I will play once in a while. For the upcoming weekend games, the biggest games drop on the 20th of February. The first being the hyped up game regarding an old order of knights protecting mankind against half-breed monsters in the Order 1886. Set in an alternate history of London, the game has gotten a lot of hype in terms of the visual look and alternate storyline, and hopefully it can live up to that hype that has been created for it. It's one of the bigger hitters in the exclusives for the PlayStation 4 this year. Also on the 20th of February, we see Kirby and the Rainbow Curse released for the Wii U. A follow-up for Kirby Canvas Curse, you'll use the stylus to guide Kirby to travel along the colorful levels and attack enemies, speed them up, and change in the various alternate forms. The game will also have amiibo support, and will have multiplayer for those who want to assist Kirby as Waddle Dee. For those who like the Total War series, I'm not one of them, Total War Attila comes out on the 17th of the, for the PC. Obviously it's about to tell of the hunt, and there is some good initial feedback, but Total War has had some flaws on releases lately, so watch out. Like cats? Like fedoras? That seems like a weird ass combination? Well Hot Tin Roof, the cat that wore a fedora, comes out on Steam on the 20th, and your investigation of the world for clues with a PI that's partnered with a cat seems to be interesting on the surface. It is something that I definitely will be taking a look at during the week. And like always, I will put some more miscellaneous games in the background here in terms of what games possibly I could look at during the week. Again, it's hard to me to judge. It's usually based on what it, when it comes out, what time it comes out, and what I'm looking at over on my channel for that day. But you never know. I do want to take a look at The Order 1886 this week. It's one of the bigger games I want to take a look at. However, I am sort of a little bit paused on that because of some of the portions I heard during, you know, E3 and things like that. Here's hope we can live up to the hype. Well, that's the hunt for this week, so I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys all later.